about to say to you from what you went through as a youth, what's one lesson you would teach these youths to stop them going down the road you went? Don't do the jail team, bro. It's long. Like, it's long. Well, believe you me, the rude boy thing and jail team is long. It's cool, to, it's cool to be a millionaire and buy your mama a house. And buy, look after your kids. Yeah? And, and take care of your community where you come from. Karen, Gary Nelson here. I hear your channel got hacked. Say nothing. You know how it goes. Keep building and the real ones will come. A policeman done that when he should have been doing his job and letting the man breathe and taking him to the station to see what's what. He killed a man with his knee and you've just saved the police officer. Let me just interject there and say that. So that just reinforces everything we're trying to, we're striving for. Yeah. So the system is institutionally racist. 100. The police are institutionally racist. This man was a racist. This man is the next policeman. Mic drop, mic drop, that's it. This is what we're trying to show. Yeah. yeah. So now what they're going to tell us now. Yeah. That means that there's a lot more of them in the police force, which is why all our young black boys are getting put inside for a bag of weed. Yeah. But you're not going to get it done on ground zero. You've got to let guys like us get up there and let our voices be heard. So let's get back to that instant message again. You told people to act the mayor, yeah. Mr. Khan. <clears throat> so tell us, what would you want to say to the mayor? What would you want him to know about the situation, what's going on right now with you? and the youth club that you're trying hard to keep alive. Not some random person who decided, I'm going to act as on some authority on these subject matters. Check my track record, and a lot of you can't check my track record because you, you ain't nobody. You don't know nobody. You can't make a call. If anybody says they are somebody somewhere on this planet, and they're supposed to be revered and respected, I can make a call. I can verify you. Believe that. I've grown from the seed of going through so much bullshit. From before getting into gangs, I was exposed at a very young age to drugs, violence, guns, knives. Yeah. To me going into the gangs, me getting inspiration, me getting inspired, me going through so much bullshit, and then me coming out the other side and telling the story now. Let us understand that, Marius. Somebody who's in a position of power, a place where they can help the youths, is saying that if you get the youths in here to work with Marius for a less price than adults that are working, it's like you're giving the youths a squeeze. Yeah. That's the attitude. Yeah. You know, a lot of the guys said to me, because I was saying to him, you know, set a price for the youths, them, right? They live in a community, right? You cannot charge them adult price. Right, so, so I'm trying to explain to him, it's the lower the price, right, so they can afford it. And he turned and said to me, no man, it's like giving them a squeeze. And I felt so pissed off, right? I felt so pissed off about the idea of the, and the things he was saying. The reason I started training was because as I was doing one of these stupid things that I was doing, I got beat up in the West End by about three different policemen. And the way that they'd done it, I couldn't sort of defend myself the way that they had me. So my chin got cut open. When my mum see that the state that they had me in, in the police station and things, she sort of, like, if I carry on, I'll die. Oh, they will kill me next time. So I changed my ways and started looking for stuff to occupy my time and things. And I moved on from there, training. I started, I was going flatsman and doing BMX racing as a youth. So that sort of took my interest and then it just, like, I, I stopped doing BMX racing at 16 because it was an Olympic sport then and then I went into kickboxing. And then from I went to kickboxing and found the right group to belong to, the trainer there, Lincoln Boney, from the Vipers gym, just was like a guardian angel to me and a bigger brother that walked me through and showed me bare positive stuff. Yeah, man, so I am profit. Yeah. So respect for letting us fly through your ends, big man. Yeah. So let's start this at the top. Hear what I'm saying? Rise of the Lengman. What's good with that? Get into some of them questions from the streets, because we're going to keep this real, you get me? Yeah. Right about now, Jay gang there's a few questions they want to ask you out here. One of them's about the glasses, big man. 
They say, right now, every video you do, you've got the glasses on. They're like, what, you're hiding yourself. If you've got something in them eyes that we can't see. Okay, well, I'm glad we got into you having the biggest CD of the year because I was up on your Instagram <laughs> and I need you to let us know. What does G-O-A-T mean to you? The greatest of all time, man. I thought so. The greatest so what of all, makes you the greatest, greatest of all time? time man. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Greatest of all time. Yeah, that's a, a big goal. pair of boots like, to be wearing. This is what I'm saying. And this is what I'm saying. And I'm going to put this out there. You see right now, as far as the talent's concerned, as far as the music's concerned, I don't think there's any other camp talking to Tizzy Gang right now. The people want to know. Is Killer Valley a snitch? It's a rough patch for the man, man. you get me? Yeah. Like, music ain't really been top of man's agenda right now because there's been a lot of things going on, you see what I'm saying? So, yeah. Obviously, if man was in a better position in the music thing, you know, I probably would have carried on full steam ahead. But at the time, it wasn't really moving and a lot of shit was happening. So I said, let me just fall back for a second and just overwatch the thing. So we're going to ask you now, what would you say to anybody who says, listen, mm. we don't care how positive you've been over there how many years. Yeah. We don't care about how good you are at cutting yeah. air. Yeah. We don't care that you're spreading the good words. Yeah. You started something that has continuously had an impact on the youths from that generation yes. to this. The Untouchables is one of the most named gangs when youths remember back from what was. Yeah, nice. So you had a big impact in what the youths are on now. We're looking at you at that and saying yeah. you listen, you started something and in our eyes, that's all we're gonna ever see. What do you say to them people? Gang banger stanner, stanner man and stanner. What are we calling you from now on? Stanner, gang banger stanner, but stanner ain't. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying, yeah, what's the difference between a 21 year old gang banger stanner and a 29 year old stanner. Temp man think of a bitch or a snitch. Oh fuck a bitch, fuck a snitch as well, you know what I mean? Cause right about now a lot of good brothers are sitting behind bars cause of snitches. And people that are bitching out after they've done shit they shouldn't have done cause they weren't built for it. Trust me, fuck a crab nigga as well cause they fucking crabs blood, you know what I mean? Like they're just fucking jumping on some crazy shit blood and not even focusing about how fucking easy it is, you know what I mean, money, these things are easy, you know what I mean? What would you say to any road rapper that's out there with fire in his soul and maybe a gun in his hand and that's why he ain't getting nowhere? Well, I would tell a soldier, you know what I'm saying, rethink, rethink everything, like, think before you move, you know what I'm saying, but as far as the music, you know what I'm saying, don't let nobody change who you are. Don't let nobody that hasn't been in the street and doesn't know about the struggle try to tell you how to rap about your struggle because it's your story. Everybody's DNA is different. Don't let nobody change your DNA, man. Real recognize real. For those of us that don't know, what does an L plate sentence mean? Obviously, it's a, it's a life sentence and you know how it goes. And that is a minimum of 99 years. You get given a tariff, a minimum that you can do. And then if after that time you've shown a certain progression in your behavior or they're happy with you, you will be paroled to be on license. I know a guy, yeah, that was in pen. Cool, yard man, got himself in a mix up. One day, my man just went to the kitchen, man, I hot oiled him, and a free man stabbed him up. You know what I'm saying? And that was sticky, man. But the screw held, held on to him, and when he held on to him, his face was on his fucking shirt, you get me? And when he looked at his face, his face was just pink. I come out of Jordan, I said to man, I'm gonna start a record label. Fam, man looked at me like I was a madman, fam. The rules looked at me like I was nuts. I'm coming to the man and I'm saying, well, we're going to start a record label. Man's like, what? That's some jolting, record label. That's how backwards enough for the man anymore. Mm. Like, the streets in general, not just my man, the streets in general. People's looking like, what? No, fuck that fam, let's sell, let's sell some drugs. Or well, let's go and do some robberies. That's how, that's how dumb down the streets was at the time. Life's not as simplistic as that. And it's not stacked like that. And some people, things they do is because they ain't got no choice. Others do it for financial reasons. Others do it because of peer pressure. Others do it because they're just nasty guys. Yeah? It could be any kind of reason. Some might have mental health issues, anything. Yeah? So obviously, if you are a victim and you've been shot or whatever, yeah, it's a terrible thing. And I know people have been shot and they never told me it was nice. 
Yeah. What if I walk in HMV? <laughs> is there an album in there from nah, you? No, nah, no, there's not an album in HMV. Still. So what's going on with that? Why you ain't in HMV, big man? We want to see you up there with a the gigs album, innit? Yeah, yeah, obviously everyone has their time. You can't even bless a stage. That's a joke thing. Yeah. You get me? How can, how can you have... How can you have artists like Tanner, Giggs, Shaq Corleone, Elms, Ardock? There's X amount of talent. There's talent in East, North, and yeah. East. Guys. We can't do shows, what, because we had a past and we talk about shit that's real and yeah. we really was about it, yeah. was about these things, yeah? And so we can't do shows. So what are you saying about the Little Wayne thing? There's a bag load of rumours. What happened there? What exactly was the case with Little Wayne? 